Do you ever feel that your art isn't good enough? Maybe you're having trouble getting the drawing done and are really tired of all that erasing and are at the point of throwing your brushes away. Well, stop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create art the easy way and we even provide you with free reference photographs and trace down drawings so that you can make your life easier and press on with the painting. In fact, we provide you with free trace down drawings and reference photographs for all of our videos here on YouTube. And I'll tell you later on how you can obtain them. Let's do this. Okay, so the lovely people at Etcher have sent me some supplies to try out and today I'm going to be painting on this 100% wood pulp paper and it's 300 GSM and it's vegan friendly. Now I haven't used this paper before so I'll be talking you through how I feel about it as we work through the tutorial. They've also sent me this incredible set of 10 brushes. These are high quality synthetic brushes. They also come in this beautiful case and I'll be using a selection of sizes from this set today. Um, they are super lightweight and have beautiful points. Um, so far, I'm really, really impressed with them. I'm on my old little brush here for mixing. The paints that I'm going to be using are primarily from Schmincke and I'm also going to be using one or two other supplies as we work through but I'll be talking to you about them as I work through the tutorial so that you can see exactly what I'm using along with my cute little Etcher double palette here. This has plenty of wells for me to use and it doesn't stain. So everything I'm going to be using I will link in the description box below. So let's make this a super easy tutorial and have fun with painting. Please use the colours that you have within your own kit. I'm also going to be using these gold paints from Etcher, but I'm aiming to have a background colour of this beautiful peachy tone. And this is what we're going to be applying before we do anything else. I'm going to be using Jean Brilliant and a little bit of this is um, from Schmincke and this color is Vermilion Light. So we're going to be having sort of weak and watery mixes of both of these colors. Going to be working wet and wet so that our background is lovely and soft and blurry. I also decided to add this color here. This is from Etcher's metallic set, gold metallic set, and this is white gold. Now, as you can see, a simple outline is all we need. And I have traced this down and straight onto the watercolor paper with just plain water using my number 12 brush. And because this paper is very, very absorbent, um, you need to put quite a bit of water on to get that lovely blurred effect. I'm going to be working in this painting just by gently applying that water to the areas where I want to drop that paint in. You don't want to add your water where you don't want the paint to go. So take care working around the outside of the flower. Once you've applied your water like this, just give it a few moments to sink in. You don't want that water to be glistening too much on your paper because it means that when you apply your paint, it will kind of float onto the top and we don't want that. Just give it a second and let it sink in. Jean Brilliant is the first colour. I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. I'm just going to let this settle into the paper like this and I'm just randomly pushing it onto the paper and letting the water on the paper do the work and spread that paint for me. Notice how I'm using the tip of the brush to gently merge that paint against the petals like this and then I'm just dropping in this gorgeous vermilion light sort of wherever I want it to go. We're going to let the paper do the hard work, okay? This is a super easy, relaxed tutorial. No stress here. Just let that paint soak into that paper and do the work for you. Now, because this paper is wood pulp and it is something I haven't used before, I noticed that as I was working through the tutorial that the, the paper was very, very absorbent. As I said earlier on, it's almost like a blotting paper. So you need to be a little bit more heavy handed with this um, compared to maybe um, a sort of hot press paper. It's quite a robust paper and great if you're a little bit nervous of working with watercolor. So just carry on the process and do the same on the other side. I really am just randomly dropping in the colors. And of course you can use whichever color you want to. I 
I decided to use the gold tone because it made it look a little bit special. You may not be able to see it in this light, but trust me, these gold colors are just incredible. Now, let me tell you how you can obtain the reference photographs and traceables for our tutorials here on YouTube. One of the ways that you can obtain them is by joining our Facebook group where we put all of our reference photographs and line drawings um, over on our group and you can obtain them that way and it gives you the opportunity to share your work with other group members. But don't worry, if Facebook isn't your thing, I'll also put them right at the end of this video. That way you can screenshot them and print them out yourselves and it also means that you get right to the end of this video so that you can see that tricky process unfold. Notice at this point how that paint is blurring into that initial wash. You really can go to town with this and make it as dramatic or as subtle as you want to. Now I'm adding the white gold paint and I'm just dropping this in as you can see here. Just again, really random pattern. Just want this to have a really soft glisten. This is my number three round. This is from the set that Etcher have sent me. And notice how I'm sort of pushing that damp paint up to the pencil line. Now you don't have to be super careful with this one. It isn't a botanical painting. It's all about having fun with art. But if botanical painting is your thing, we do have a Patreon, which I'll tell you about now. I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from many weekly videos of doodles, vlogs and podcasts, to full-length botanical painting tutorials, which are exclusive to Patreon and are, of course, ad-free. If this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description below, plus it's a way for you to support my channel. If you do enjoy botanical painting and you want to take your paintings to the next level, do join us over on Patreon because we have monthly tutorials and um, they are exclusive to Patreon, so you won't find them here on YouTube and they are more in depth. So just pushing that paint against the pencil lines like this and then we're going to have to leave the whole thing dry. You have to be a little bit patient with it and just let it dry completely before we can start to add the colour to this gorgeous poppy. All of the materials that I'll be using in this video, I will put in the description box underneath, along with a discount code. The guys at Etcher have given us a special code so that you can have a 10% discount for any materials that you buy. So I will link that in the description box right underneath this video if you want to check that out and get yourself some um, discounted goods there. Everything's dry and let's look at this beautiful poppy. I am mixing vermilion light along with yellow or <laughs> along with yellow orange. You can see how watery that consistency is to begin with because this is the base tone of our poppy. We can pretty much take this everywhere apart from the center and we're going to be building up these colors once this is dry. I'm sort of switching between the colors that I've mixed here. I have vermilion light in a watery consistency, vermilion light mixed with a yellow orange and a slightly thicker mix of vermilion as you can see. Now I did feel that this part of the poppy had a more kind of orangey tone and which is why I'm putting this in here. Notice I'm not being too fussy, just putting that paint on and letting it dry. If you are enjoying this video, you may want to consider subscribing to our channel where we post new content every single Tuesday. They are full length tutorials and if you hit that bell notification, YouTube will let you know when I've uploaded and you won't miss any of our tutorials. And you may want to also show me some love by hitting that like button. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you enjoy my content and it means that more people get to see it. I have been switching between these colors on my palette here. 
like I said, I'm not working strictly to the photograph. This is all about painting for enjoyment and taking the stress out of the painting. We don't want botanical painting today. We just want something that we can show for our work that makes us really, really proud to create and not be frightened to get paint onto paper. You can see me here just dropping in the next layer of paint because the first wash isn't completely dry we're still getting that lovely soft blur and just dropping in that color just to strengthen up some of the colors here and there just wherever i feel like it because this paper is very robust and very blotting paper like it really gives you the opportunity to be a little bit more kind of less cautious with it shall we say and you can just really get that colour in quite quickly by letting that paint drop into that soft damp paper and give you that lovely blurred effect. Now that this is dry we can start to use um, a sort of thicker mix of the same colour. This is still vermilion light using my number three round this time wet on dry which means I'm applying the paint directly onto the paper like this. Only this time I'm leaving some gaps where we have those initial washes to give the illusion of the folds and the creases within the flower. Once that paint is applied, I clean my brush and my small pedal that I have on my palette here, pat it dry on my kitchen paper, and use that damp brush just to wiggle some shapes onto the petals like this to give that lovely soft edge. At this point, the brush has to be damp and not wet, because if it is wet, it just means that you'll push that paint away from itself and cause it to bloom and we don't want that so clean your brush and your puddle pat it on the kitchen paper and then blend it like this once again not being fussy not being too careful i just want to give the viewer of the painting the illusion that there are gaps here and there and that means that the color isn't flat If you are on Instagram, you may also want to uh, follow us over there. We are at the Wonders of Watercolour. Take a look. We post daily, pretty much. And we also have lots of fun stuff, behind the scenes stuff, reels, upcoming tutorials, all that kind of thing. So if that's something that interests you and you are on Instagram, give us some love, show us some support and join us over there. Same process, just applying the paint to the dry paper and using the tip of my brush to put that paint wherever I want it to go. You can see at this point, by leaving those gaps, it really makes the painting just give it that little sort of bit of an extra edge. So just drop in that paint where you want to. All relaxed here. So this is all about making art the easy way. Because we've put that first wash in place, we can kind of follow the pattern that we've got down and just apply that orange tone where the orange is and the red tone where the red tone is, making the job super easy. And I'll continue this process over all of the petals. The important thing here is just to have fun with your painting and also make sure that you leave those gaps. So I haven't tried wood pulp paper before, um, have you ever used it and if so drop it in the comments below and let me know what you think about it. It's really interesting, I almost imagined it to be very similar to a kind of good quality cold pressed paper which I really love. I've used um, Etcher's sketchbook which is a cold press 300 GSM in my tutorials before for even my botanical work and I love it. I haven't come across this before, I've never used it before I should say. Um, but it's just, it's really different, um, but I really like it. I think for, it's going to be particularly good for really strong dark colors. Um, it lends itself well to building up. 
if I were to say something slightly negative about it, it's not easy to lift out. If lifting out is your thing, then this is almost impossible. But I think it's an amazing paper, really, really good quality and super absorbent for getting those strong colours that a sort of high quality hot press paper would make impossible. So this definitely is worth checking out. You can see at this point how thick the paint is, but because we've applied our, our lighter, thinner layers underneath, it gives us the opportunity to build up those brighter tones. Key to success here is making sure that your first washes are weak, en weak enough to take the thicker washes as we work through. You can see by leaving those gaps, it really does bring this poppy to life already, but we've still got quite a way to go. All these little creases that I'm applying are just random and no rhyme or reason. I'm just dropping in some paint where I feel I just want to add a bit of drama or a little bit of depth of colour. So we are kind of working with a sort of limited palette on this flower head. Again, this is just vermilion that I'm dropping in with the tip of my brush. But it is a slightly thicker mix at this point. You can see here I'm using my flat synthetic brush to try and lift up the paint but as I said earlier on it did make it a little bit difficult. So I'm just adding a little bit of the yellow orange to the middle like this. Permanent sap green is up next and I'm mixing it with a tiny bit of the yellow orange colour. You could use Indian yellow if you don't have that. This is for the stem. And I've also mixed um, a tiny bit of the vermilion with it because I didn't want it to be kind of too green. So straight onto the paper, wet on dry, with my number three round. Just working all the way down the stem and I'm adding a tiny bit of the yellow, the yellow tone as I work through because I don't want it to be a solid green colour. Also a tiny bit of vermilion there to add at the top. Okay, this is Perilean Green. This is also, these colours are by Schmincker, by the way, apart from the sap green, which is Windsor and Newton. By adding the Perilene to the green that I've mixed, it just gives that nice darker value. And we're working on the bottom part of the stem to apply this colour. So we have three sort of colour greens here on this stem. Just working right down to the bottom. I'm just going to drop a tiny bit of perylene at the top here just to give it a little bit more of a darker tone. I'm taking that line slightly down and again on the other side dropping in that colour again a bit of variation just to give it a bit more interest. And because this paper stays wet for quite a long time it means that if you're working wet and wet you get more of an opportunity to drop in your colour for that soft blur. Same on the other side, same colours. We don't want to overcomplicate things here, just get those colours onto the stem, take that colour right the way down. Just adding a tiny bit more perylene green.
I'm just going to take this colour in between these little sections on the top of the seed head, like this. And now for the seed head itself, and it's really simple, we're going to mix a really, really watery mix of uh, perylene green. And we also have a tiny bit of perylene green with sap. Wet on wet again, so we're going to be applying the water to the poppy seed head first. And once that's settled into the paper, we can go straight in with a watery mix of perylene. This gives it that kind of bloom effect, um, makes it look that lovely bluey green. And I'm all, because I felt that there was a sort of tiny bit of a yellow element at the top, we've got the sap green mixed in with it there. Now you can see here that I, did, I didn't wait quite long enough for the water to seep into the paper. And that's what I mean by it kind of glistening, glistening a little bit too much. You just need to give it that few moments to drop in and it just makes the application a little bit easier. I'm too impatient, I needed to press on with it, but just give it a, a few moments to dry. So now that that first layer is dry, we can start to think about adding a tiny bit more detail. I've run out of space on this palette here, so I'm using the second one within my kit and I have the same mixes as before. To recap, we have perylene green with sap and a little bit of the yellow orange mixed in with the others. So I'm just adding a little bit of detail here and there. We have the sap green with the perylene at the top and we're going to be adding the perylene here and there, cleaning my brush with a tiny puddle of water and blending it through. It's the perylene green that makes this poppy seed head have come to life um, by adding this green, it just gives that illusion of bloom and because we're just adding it in a darker value here, it just makes it look more real. So this is all about creating art the easy way, without that pressure. I know it can be really daunting sometimes to create art that you feel proud of. And you know, sometimes that pressure's there and it can make you feel really intimidated and too scared to do anything. I speak from experience. So don't be frightened of it. It's art, if you make a mistake, you can start again, no pressure. So I've just applied some of the darker value of the perylene green. That just means that I've got less water and more pigment. At this point, I've added um, a little bit of, this is ruby red, and I've added it to the perylene green to put in the detail at the top of the seed head like this. If you have got a purpley tone, you could use that or even something like a perylene violet. By adding the ruby red, this is from the set that I had from Schmincke. It just gave it that purpley hue that I felt was needed for the top. And just strengthening the colours on the stems. And I'm taking this tone, the ruby red mixed with the perylene, just to add a tiny bit of detail to the centre. And while I have this mix on my brush, I'm just creating a tiny bit of shadow here that I could see on the photograph. And as you can see, we've kept the photograph in screen just as a guide. So now that everything's dry on, on the poppy itself, we can start to just give those petals that final bit of oomph and add some thicker values, that's thicker paint with less water here and there. As I said earlier on, because this paper is so robust, it's the perfect paper for building up your darker, brighter colors. You would not be able to get this kind of depth of color on a mixed medium paper, which I also love because it would just lift off. So if you're looking for a paper that gives you that ability to really build up your bold colors, then this is definitely the one for you. I'm randomly applying this paint, as I said before, where I feel I just wanna add a little bit of color, a little bit of zhuzh, not too fussy. I just want you to be able to look at it and know that it's not flat. That's the important thing here creating folds and making it look as though 
it's kind of dancing on the page. I'm just adding a final glaze of that yellow wash that we used at the beginning just to give it a little bit more vibrancy. And now that this element is dry, we can just outline one or two of these little squiggly bits. I'm sure they've got a name, let me know if you know, drop it in the comments below. But I don't know what they're called, but we're just going to go around the outside to give the illusion of them having a little bit of depth. And just using that damp brush to blend it. I'm also taking a tiny bit of this colour, this is Perilean Green, just underneath those little areas there to give the illusion of there being a bit of a shadow. Okay, everything's dry and we're down to Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. We're going to be using this on the stems of the flower and the poppy seed head and I'm also using it in the middle here just to give that uh, central area a bit of shape. Now I'm using this pretty much straight from the jar here and I'm using the tip of my brush to paint on little hairs like this. Now don't worry that they look a little bit too stark at the moment because when they dry they will dry a little bit lighter and look a little bit more natural. So I'm just kind of following roughly the pattern that I see on my photograph. Just take your time and apply them all the way down the stem. Don't put them all in the same direction. That's the important thing because they're not in one direction on the actual thing. Once you've painted in your little white spikes there, I'm just going around some of them with some perilean green just to enhance them there, here and there. And it makes them stand out from the stem as you can see. But I've also got a tiny bit left on the bottom of my brush and I'm going to be taking that on the outside of some of the hairs that I painted on. That extends the white bit into that green bit like that and you can see where that little hair finishes on some of these hairs that we painted on to begin with. So you start off with a white bit and then you go on to the green bit to extend it out onto that background wash and you can really make those hairs stand out. So just by doing this you can see that it makes it look a lot more obvious that they're these little fluffy hairs that you can see. And you can also take this colour around the kind of base of one or two of these hairs like this just to make them stand out a little bit. I've also got um, a little bit of the yellow tone mixed in there but it doesn't matter you can just add the perily in. Extending those hairs out onto the background like this. And once again just working around one or two of them just to give them that little bit of oomph. Now we have our 0 .005 fine liner pen. This is from the set that I showed you at the beginning and once again I will link everything in the description box below. Etcher really kindly sent me these black liner graphic pens selection and there are quite a few of them in this set but I really like this one to do my outlining and when you do your outlining um, don't be too fussy and you can even take your outline on the outside of this if you want to give it a really kind of illustrative look. I'm just being really light handed here because the paper has texture it makes really light work of this and it does the work for you to create those little bumps and undulations as we work through. And I'm just applying this ink pen on the poppy head and on the seed head but I'm not on the stems. 
And I'm also using this pen to create some sort of detail here and there on the seed head and on the poppy itself, including the center like this. From the photograph, it wasn't really that obvious what was going on in the middle of the plant, so I'm just kind of making this up. And I'm adding a few bits of details, as, just as I felt necessary. And I'm also enhancing some of the paint like this. You can see those natural lines where the paint has settled, and I'm just using the pen to outline them here and there. You can go however crazy with this you want to, just adding a bit of detail here and there where that paint has settled, or you don't have to do it at all. I just really love this look though. And finally, our gold paint. This is the white gold that I mentioned at the beginning, and I'm using this to outline my painting like this. I just think it makes it look really complete and finished. And of course, we're nearly at the end of this tutorial. I'm going to take this all the way around like this. And of course, I will leave the reference photograph and the line drawing at the very end if you want to screenshot those and print it out. So remember to stay right until the end so that you can print that out. You can just about see those particles of gold shimmering here on this uh, painting at this point. I think the light is just at the right angle now so you can see those droplets that I put on at the beginning. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll link everything in the description box underneath this video. Consider subscribing if you've enjoyed it and uh, stay until the end to get those screenshots and I'll see you next time.